So I needed a bit more space than usual today to show you something. My local council give us this little recycling bag so as we can put all of our old batteries in and they can take them away for recycling. I've actually been saving them up for about a year now just to see how many I get through and it's a bit concerning. I mean, as you can see, this bag is now pretty full. Okay, let's have a look then. I'm going to pour this whole bag out into this bowl here so we can take a good rummage through what I've collected this last year. So, here we go. Yeah, that's quite noisy, sorry. Okay, so what have we got here? Here is an old uh, battery from a really old phone. Um, I threw a phone out, well I took it down to the recycling centre but I wanted to collect the battery just to show here. Uh, we've got some D-sized batteries here, I've got four of them. Uh, they're from an old barbecue rotisserie, the barbecue rusted to pieces and that went down to the tip with the phone actually. Uh, we've got a lot of AA batteries in here, there we go, loads of these. Most of these are actually from my Evo Home radiator valves and they take two double A's. To be fair to it, they do last about two years and hopefully if I ever get a heat pump, I won't need those anymore. Loads of these little lithium coin cells and uh, little Energizer lithium um, cells as well. Yeah, these are from sensors, Zigbee sensors, Z-Wave sensors and things like that. They actually last quite a while. Well, the, um, the ones that don't last too long are actually the door sensors. Um, they take these 2450 cells. Uh, they don't last very long, unfortunately, but most of the others last about two years, so they're not uh, a massive problem. Uh, what else have we got? Yes, you'll see the biggest problem I've got are these. They're C-sized batteries, and nearly all of the batteries in here are old Varta C-sized batteries. Um, and there's a reason for that, and it's the first place I'm gonna start when trying to sort out all of this excess waste. So, C-sized batteries then. I use a lot of them because I have pets. I have a dog, Biscuit, who you may have seen in my videos before. I also have two cats. There's Wednesday, a tortoise shell, and Sheldon, who is really fat. Now, I know I shouldn't fat shame my cat, but that is the cause of this issue. He'll eat anything and everything, so we've had to get some smart pet feeders that open only when they detect the microchip in the back of the neck. I have the Shaw pet feeder. Well, I've got three of them actually. They work really well and I've had them for quite a few years now, but they each take four C-sized batteries and realistically they only last about four months or so before they need replacing. I let them carry on until they totally stop working, so I ignore the low battery warnings for a couple of weeks, but still, I chomp through the these batteries like Sheldon in a pool of go-cat. We also have a shore flap pet door which is a large cat flap from the same manufacturer. Again it's a large one because Sheldon is so fat and got stuck in the smaller one we had before. True story. This also takes four C-sized batteries and burns through them just as quickly. Now I know that rechargeable batteries exist in these sizes. In fact I have a set of four C-sized rechargeable batteries. These are Amazon's own brand ones. They use nickel metal hydride as the chemistry. You'll see that written as NIMH, and that tech has been around for a very long time, decades in fact. Rechargeable batteries are mainly useful in high drain devices. That is, devices which burn through batteries quite quickly because they're in constant use. In these situations, the additional cost of buying rechargeable batteries can be offset against the cost of buying lots of disposable ones over a short period of time. If you have slow drain devices like smoke alarms or remotes, don't use rechargeable batteries. It would be a false economy as you'd likely never need to recharge them within the lifespan of the batteries. Rechargeable batteries have a few problems though. Firstly, they just don't have anywhere near the capacity of regular good quality non-rechargeable batteries. I've been using these Amazon ones in the pet door. The regular batteries would last about four months. These ones last about one month before I need to recharge them. And recharging them is a bit of a pain. You need a special charger 
and depending on the charger you get it can take anywhere from 3 to 30 hours to recharge them I didn't realize that my old battery charger only outputs at 120 milliamps so it takes over 28 hours to fully charge C sized batteries so I've actually purchased this newer one which can charge up to 1800 milliamps. That's 15 times faster. So I can actually charge the batteries up in two to three hours. But one of the biggest problems with these types of batteries is that they output at a lower voltage compared to non-rechargeable batteries. Most battery power devices are designed to accept cells that are about 1.5 volts. Nickel metal hydride cells only output at 1.2 volts. That doesn't sound like much of a difference, but if your batteries are being used in series, let's say there are four of them, your device would be expecting about six volts, but these rechargeable ones are only supplying 4.8. Now, a lot of devices are fine with that. For example, my cat flap has a setting that lets you tell it you are using lower voltage batteries and it will be more tolerant over its low battery warnings. If your devices are happy to run on these lower voltages, like most torches and radios tend to be, and you don't mind the longer recharge time, then these batteries are an absolute bargain and can save you a fortune, especially if you're using them with high drain devices. But there are some devices that just don't like lower voltage batteries. The pet feeders are one example. The rechargeable batteries work in them just fine to start with, but only last about a day before the device starts complaining about low batteries. Now, you may know that most high-tech devices, and I'm talking phones, most smart devices, and even cars, actually use lithium chemistry in their batteries. Well, some enterprising companies are now selling standard battery cell sizes using lithium chemistry. Normally, lithium cells run between three and four volts, but these new ones must have got a voltage regulator in them because they output at about one and a half volts. They also have a USB port on them so as you can recharge them easily within a couple of hours. I've purchased a few different brands so as I could try them all out. First I went for some SZ Empty. Empty? Why would you want an empty battery? Anyway, the manufacturer is called SZ Empty. I went for some AA batteries, a pack of four. They each have a USB-C port and come with a four-way charge cable so as you can charge all four at the same time. I've been running two of these in my wireless keyboard for a few weeks and they've been perfect so far. I was using Duracell branded rechargeable ones before and they would last about a month. These ones are still going after four weeks with no sign of needing to be recharged. I've actually moved these now to my robo bin, I mean automatic opening bin, which also gets through a set of four AA batteries every three months. And then to the pet problem and those C-sized batteries. I went for two packs of the high trends ones, giving me four batteries total. These ones have a micro USB charging port, which is not a problem, but it does suggest that they are probably older models. They were the cheapest though, and had the most reviews that looked genuine. I put these in the cat flap to start with and everything looked good. It all powered on and I could set it to lock the animals in or out and if I shoved a cat through the door it would detect it and unlock. However, if a cat tried to get through on its own then it just wouldn't detect it. If I used the same batteries in one of the cat feeders then it worked fine. In fact, I've left those batteries in Sheldon's feeder because they're working so well in there. So. I needed to figure out if this was a general problem with the cat flap not liking these types of batteries or was it just these specific ones. So I've ordered some more C-sized lithium batteries, this time from a brand called City York. These are USB-C rechargeable ones and come in a pack of two. Annoyingly, they come with individual charging cables, so I just used the handy multi-cable that came with the AA ones. It's a bit of a pain, but you can work around it. So I charged them up, put them in the cat flap, and no, they also didn't work. So then I tried them in the dog's feeder and they didn't work in there either. Same problem as the cat flap has. The mechanism would work manually, but it wouldn't detect the dog. So I moved them to Wednesday's feeder and they worked just fine there. What I think is happening here is that the RFID circuitry inside the Shure devices are just too sensitive to the lithium battery voltages and don't provide the detection range required. My dog is a lot bigger than the cat's, well, one cat, and her microchip is a lot further from the feeder when she tries to use it, whereas the cats are able to get their necks right inside the feeder so it can detect them more easily. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is use the lithium batteries in the feeders for fat cat and thin cat, and I'm gonna use the older rechargeable nickel ones in the cat flap, 
and just put up with recharging them every month using the new charger, so it'll only be out of action for a couple of hours. Then sadly, I'm going to have to stick with regular disposable ones for the dog's feeder, at least until I can find a better solution. So let's talk about cost next then, because rechargeable lithium batteries are not cheap. I paid £37.98 for four of the City York C-sized batteries. The pack of four AA SZ empty batteries was much more reasonable at £17.99, but that's still expensive. Compared to the cost of disposable batteries, you're unlikely to break even in the short term or, or even ever. So if you choose to use these batteries, you'll probably not be doing it to save money. You'll be doing it to reduce waste, which if you cast your mind back to the start of this video is exactly why I'm doing this. Yes, to power three of my pet devices using these batteries will cost me about a hundred pounds, but the hope is that I will no longer be buying a large tray of disposable batteries every few months, which then get thrown away a few months later. Hopefully these lithium batteries will last the lifetime of the gadgets and beyond. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Please let me know in the comments if you've seen any better products. Don't paste any links because YouTube's spam filter won't let that through, but name the products and the brand so as I can go and take a look. I will of course put affiliate links to the products I've shown in this video down in the description, so please use those if you decide to buy any and it'll help to support this channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to see more from me. Thank you for watching, goodbye.